one. It's Henry. At Mowers and Bones. Good morning. This is my Toro 826. I've worked on this a few times already. This is from my friend Mike from Mike's Lawn Service Babylon. Uh, we recently did a trade where I gave him my uh, pull-on chainsaw that I got from my neighbor, uh, Chris, that I fixed. I was going to sell it for like 100 bucks or 150 whatever. He needed a chainsaw and he didn't want this because after I changed the belts on it and fixed it, right, I thought it worked. Augers were spinning and Peller was probably going to throw snow really well. But he tried it uh, one of the snowstorms that we got this year and uh, he says it doesn't blow snow at all. So I was thinking, maybe the belt slipped off? Who knows, right? Maybe. Uh, he also says that when it was full of gas, it took some time, but it leaked all into his garage. So I have a feeling that I have some kind of a fuel leak either at the petcock here, which is steel. It's a pretty common problem with the steel gas tanks and the petcock assembly over here. So it might leak the gas. Um, I'm going to put gas in it and uh, start her up and just see if the auger and the impeller spins, you know, at a high rate. Um, I have a subscriber who contacted me through email who says that, uh, I mean, I don't know where he lives or anything, but he says he's interested in this machine as a project. And I told him, look, I'll take 250 for it right now as is, because from what I understand, the starter assembly is worth over $100 itself, you know? engine itself is worth like maybe 200 250 something like that um, but I figured as is I'll give it to him for 250 but if I fix it it might be more you know uh, but we're gonna find out why it doesn't blow snow I'm gonna put gas in it right now and see if it where the leaks are That's a lot of gas that I just put in there. But we want to test it and see, you know? So far, so good. I mean, got to give it some time. I'll check everything and make sure it doesn't leak. Now, I thought that maybe the gearbox might be busted, right? So I'm just going to take my hand, rotate the impeller by hand. And as you can see, I'm rotating the impeller and everything is turning as it should. I'm putting my leg on the auger to stop it as if it's a load to see if it strips. It's strong. It's still turning the auger, no problem. So the only way this doesn't blow snow is if the belt is off, right? So I haven't used this in a while. We'll make sure this doesn't go anywhere. The auger is off now. We'll put the throttle to about fast or three quarters. Transmission's in neutral. I don't see any gas leaks as of yet. That's a good sign. Uh, there's no primer on this, so you just choke. It's on choke, so you, while it's choked, pull it a couple of slow times just to kind of prime the fuel. Okay, let's give it a pull and see.
so uh, as you guys see, there doesn't appear to be anything wrong with it. Started up in one pull, ran smoothly, auger and impeller spin with seemingly a lot of power. The impeller is what is spinning so fast, right? The auger in this cylindrical design is designed to go at a certain speed. I've seen it in other videos. And it's not like the newer versions where they spin relatively quick at high RPMs. But the impeller is spinning like crazy. And just to see if it blew anything, we took some leaves and threw it in there and, you know? How'd that sound go again? Uh, I don't see any gas leaks. Like I said, it started up in the first pull. Transmission's good, moves forward and backwards at three speeds forward, one speed reverse. So I'm actually thinking 250 is kind of too cheap, isn't it? <laughs> but we don't have any snow to really test it under load. But uh, apparently the belt change that I did is just fine. Everything seems like it's completely fine. So I don't understand what uh, Mike was talking about when he said it didn't throw snow. Could it be that he didn't know how to engage the augers to move with that handle? It's possible. Starts up in one pull, engine seems really strong. I did an oil change on this the last time I had it. Shoot directional works just fine. Up and down adjustments. I don't see anything wrong with this thing. Technically I should sell this for like 350 or something, you know? But it's for a subscriber and he wants it. I guess that's cool. Let's try the electric start, huh? Here's an overview of the Toro 826. As you can see, it's got a three blade impeller with the curved tip on each blade that helps kind of scoop the snow. This has the old style cylindrical auger, which helps pull the snow to the center for the impeller to throw it out the chute. These are the skid shoes. These tires, uh, since I've gotten this from Mike maybe a few months ago uh, for the first time, held air, has good tread. These are 4.8 by 4 by 8 inch rim. Quick disconnect for removing the wheel. I have removed the wheel before and it's very easy to do. Put some anti-seize onto the axle. This has the differential lock for um, front propulsion. I'm sorry, uh, just propulsion. Has individual locks. You can lock it and then it moves forward. Without it being, you can actually pivot very easily. But once both these clutches are engaged, right, the differential's locked and both wheels will move as you shift into gears. This used to have a, a key that you could uh, not electric start, but rather just an on and off switch for the uh, magneto kill, right? But that never worked because this had some kind of a safety situation over here, right, where you have these handles it's kind of like uh you have to keep this on for the engine to stay on and if you it's a dead man's uh switch basically if you let go it'll stop or shut off the engine 
but this when I got it was all Dunsky missing the handle and stuff so uh, it was actually already done that way and bypassed so the key never worked so I kept the key for a future application this is the uh, throttle fast slow and all the way to the back is um, stop shifting it's always in neutral when you reverse you pull it this way while you're pulling backwards and it'll go reverse and the two uh, three front gears go forward gears this is the electric start I believe this assembly is very expensive even today um, because it's tough to find 12 volt starter uh, sorry 120 volt starter you hook it up to your uh, regular electricity AC in your house this is the fuel shut off with the old Petcock style. Fuel line goes through there, past the engine, right into the uh, carburetor there. And this carburetor, as you can see, is a uh, one piece updraft flow jet with the um, adjustment screw, which is very useful because you can really dial this in to run smoothly. This is the uh, reservoir for the Earl. I removed the wheel actually one time so I can let the oil drain out because this is kind of a bad spot, you know? Here's the oil fill reservoir. And basically when you open it up, there's no dipstick, see? It's just that you could see the oil level touching the threads and that's when you know it's full. Throttle adjustment cable straight to the throttle lever. This is your choke lever here. Etranger, étrangler, and choke. I wonder why it's in French. Gardez le mont hors de l'éjecteur et demeurez à la cas de la tarrière le moteur en marche. I haven't read French since high school. I don't think that was very good. But it means keep your hands out of the chute, man, and keep clear of the auger while the engine's running. That's what that says. In that accent. <laughs> uh, other than that, man, this is the overview of the Toro 826. There's nothing wrong with it. Everything works as it should. Has new belts, oil change. This starts in one pull, electric starts works, and the uh, goes forward and backwards just fine. And I don't see any reason why this wouldn't throw snow. Okay, I'm gonna attach my uh, extension cord in my garage onto it and uh, put it to run. Let's try. Well, <laughs> crazy, right? Um, I don't see anything wrong with this thing. This thing's ready to sell for three hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, if that guy wants it for two fifty, I guess I'll let it go. Um, you know, I just got to get something for it, especially since I could have sold the chainsaw for one fifty. You know, maybe one twenty. You know, it's a chainsaw. They're pretty cheap. You know, uh, maybe a hundred. So to make two fifty out of this, I'm fine with it. Even though it does seemingly work just fine. And uh, honestly, guys, I if there's a fuel leak. Should have been doing it by now, you know? And I don't see any fuel leaks coming out of either the carburetor or the petcock. So, nor do I even smell any fuel. So, um, this is a good snowblower. <laughs> if I don't sell it this weekend, uh, I'm going to put this in the back and keep it. Um, that's my short video for today. Cold starting on a uh, Toro 826 snowblower from the 80s i gather and uh hopefully selling it this weekend thanks a lot for joining me on this brief episode we'll see you guys next time on mowers and blowers see you guys
guys next, next, next time on Mowers and Blower. <laughs> hey, if you guys enjoy the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.